All right, it has been a while. In this video, I will showcase my new physics-based weapon system. Although I have many areas in which I'm still catching up to Boneworks, I have one part in particular that I would consider to be a considerable improvement over it, shouldering. I figured I'd give a quick update on me since my last video and the motivations for this project. Most importantly, I've completed high school and am now an undergraduate computer science student. In my final years of high school, I learned a significant amount about machine learning, particularly reinforcement learning, and developed many interesting projects. I've also worked on several VR games since then. There was one project in particular from when I was 15 in late 2017 and early 2018 that is relevant here. I was working on it for about six months with someone who at the time was a PhD student at the university that I'm now enrolled at. It was a game with Echo Arena style zero gravity locomotion, an escape from Tarkov like looting and scavenging system and interesting laser gun weapon modifications, all set within a massive one by two kilometer cylindrical space habitat. It was pretty cool. But you won't be surprised to hear that we suffered from some serious scope creep and eventually the assets required to fill the environment became too overwhelming and development seized. I learned a massive amount from my development partner and it was an invaluable experience. During the development of that game, Brennan JLA of Stress Level Zero released a video titled Guns in VR. Towards the end of the video, he talks about why the stock of a rifle is essential for stable aiming. As far as I understand, the technology shown in the video was the beginning of the Boneworks project. I don't know what's wrong with me, but since the release of the video, almost all of my VR projects have been based on the ideas he presented. Specifically, within the game I was just outlining, I developed a system that allowed you to transition between a Pavlov-style virtual stock and regular two-handed aiming. It worked alright, and since then I've experimented with all kinds of systems, recreating the likes of H3VR's virtual stock, and eventually, the current system, which I believe to be significantly more effective and elegant than anything I've seen on the market. Now, I want to make it very clear that I'm planning on releasing this system as a Unity asset in the future to get it into the hands of other developers. I hope not to pull a stress level zero and leave you hanging for about a year at a time, but we'll see how that pans out. I also need to stress that this is a very early development build. I started work on this specific project less than three weeks ago, and although I've spent nearly every waking hour since then working on it, it has a long way to go before I consider releasing it. With that said, let's dive into the demonstration. All right, so the actual gun, um, you can see it has weight, just like in Boneworks and a few other physics-based games. It uh, doesn't go through objects. It'll actually push me back. Um, everything behaves pretty naturally. The feet are pretty bad, so you get pushed around a bit too easily at the moment, but early development. Um, I can grab at multiple different locations. Uh, everything has a defined uh, level of rotational and positional freedom, so you can see it actually twists around when I move to compensate for some of the movement. Um, you'll see in a second, as soon as I pull the trigger, that rotational freedom goes away. So what happens is you have the ability to find a grip you like. You can see it's just locked in. You have you can find a grip you like um, just by moving your hand around naturally, pull the trigger, and then you are locked in and you know, totally crisp. Just works really nicely. All right, now onto the actual guns. Um, you can shoot one-handed as with most games, um, but you're going to have a lot of issue controlling the recoil, a lot of troubles, um, especially in full auto, it's going to kick a lot. You can do it, and um, again, I don't have to program any of the behavior, it's just physics based, so you tell it the amount of recoil, you tell it the weight and all the weight distribution, it'll just do it. Two-handed, logically it makes sense, it's going to be able to pull down a lot stronger. Um, I'd say the full auto recoil of the two-handed is actually less than the single shot of the one-handed. Um, yeah, it just all works nicely. This isn't shouldered, by the way. This is just the standard two-handed system with physics. If I grab it by the magazine, it kicks a lot harder. Just physics, nothing else to say. Um, again, I've told it where I'm grabbing it. The physics just does the rest. Now, it's probably not a terrible time to mention. Um, this M4 was 3D modeled by me, so it's all very temporary. I just didn't want to have somebody else's asset in my thing. Um, casings and everything, just cylinders, all pretty basic, and the arms are actually a make human model, so I'll definitely get something better eventually, but all very placeholder. All right, now as cool as all that is, the real big deal here is the shouldering system. Um, did you spot the transition there? Probably not, because there really isn't one. Um, there's just a physical shoulder, not going to explain exactly how that works, but uh, you push into it and 
it has a bit of stiffness. Uh, you can define that. At this point, it's pretty loose. Uh, you could have it so that it's like a wall that you don't really go into that much, but I found this is a good balance. You push into it and it stabilizes um, because, it touched, because it's attached to your head in one way or another. Um, it's much easier to stay aligned. You can see when I'm doing circles and pull it back into it. Um, yeah, it just moves a lot less. My hand is way off to the side and it'll be pretty much on target because, again, that third point of contact averages out the positions and keeps it on target a lot better. Uh, if you look at the actual gun, you can see that, um, I mean, it's just staying straight a lot easier with that shouldering point. Like, it's hardly moving within the frame, except the recoil, obviously, but even that's lower because of the physics. Um, the main thing is, if you have iron sights or... a magnified scope you really want that stability it's like essential and most vr games can't support that um i would say the most important thing though is the uh intuitiveness of it because my dad barely tried vr can just go in and after a few attempts he's just totally good with it um it just makes sense and most really stable uh vr stocks even if they're good don't have that factor all right now i want to talk a bit about everything that's not the gun so the arms and the body um see that the arms look pretty natural um you obviously can't see my real arms but i'll tell you right now they're never that far off um although they're not quite as accurate as bonewax yet i wouldn't say they are pretty good and they actually have uh, joint limits so you can't do 180 hand twisting and all kinds of weird stuff but um yeah, it all just works nicely. Had to become very familiar with the ulnar radius and all the different arm bones, but um, I'd say it was worth it. Of course, the arms would be bad arms if they didn't work well with guns. Um, yeah, it just all rotates really nicely. It doesn't break or anything out of the ordinary. Um, there's obviously some desync between where the virtual arms and my actual arms are just because of the uh, locking that I've set up. But for immersion's sake, it works really nicely. And you can also see when I move my head around and stuff like that, the arms don't really move that much just because there's, again, joint angles, there's drives pulling them towards their origins wherever I've defined that to be. Um, yeah, it just works pretty nicely. All right, now for the locomotion. So um, you can use your left touchpad or joystick or whatever you have um, to move around and your right one to crouch and go on your toes effectively and then if you let go when you're crouching below the bottom you jump uh it's pretty much the boneworks control scheme but i might change it at this point in time it's just a placeholder because everything below the legs is a placeholder or everything below the clavicles pretty much but um yeah you can walk into a wall it'll push you back again it's all physics i don't need to program any of this it just works step up on things uh, again the legs will be replaced but that's what i've got at the moment the gun as it is connected to you also pushes you back uh just makes logical sense and two-handed i don't know why it would change but i felt the need to show it to you so here we are next thing um you can climb so if you grab something uh your legs kind of just drop out from under you at the moment but you can Scale walls, um, anything with the defined tag will allow you to climb on it. And at this point in time, it's just everything. In Boneworks, they only have certain surfaces that you can grab, but time being, that's what I've got. Um, climb up this, you can hold yourself up with your forearms. Um, bit of wrist rolling there, but that's just the colliders not quite working right. But yeah, um, you can pull yourself up. I'm not holding on to anything. This is just me sitting there and then I can pull myself up and my legs will shoot me up high because that's the current system. Uh, I'll drop down again and that's pretty much it. All right, now I couldn't make this without adding uh, the feature you're about to see in a second. It's just a bit of a cool factor. Totally unnecessary, but I did it anyway. Um, slow motion. So you can go up or down time scales. Um, going from one to one half to one quarter to one eighth and one sixteenth speed. And yeah, I mean, it's just cool. <laughs> That's all there is to it. it. Shows off the physics, everything stays consistent. Um, yeah, the casings are actually physically active. 
and do a reload kickflip without the reload. Um, this would disappoint Brennan and JLA, but I haven't implemented the reloads yet, so it's as close as we're going to get for now. Catch the casing and do a not very good throw. Um, I'll give that another crack in a second. There we go. Chuck it between our hands and yeah, just very, very cool. And I probably should cut it about now, but um, it's slow motion and who can't do with more slow motion footage? It's just cool. Now, one particularly fascinating quirk of this system is um, you can change the masses of things because it's physics. Um, this is one particularly chunky gun. I didn't update the graphics, but just imagine it's like an MG42 or something. Um, it's one hefty gun. So it's got a lot more. I mean, you can just see it. It's heavy. There's nothing more to it. Um, I up the fire rate a fair bit as well, but um, yeah, just a... Good old MMG. Um, this stuff is really intuitive to do. I don't have to write any custom code for it. Just maybe two variables changed, fire rate and mass, and it just handles itself. I guess, um, obviously in slow motion as well. But it just allows for some interesting mechanics. I can already think of a few at the top of my head um, relating to weapon modding, but just, yeah, a lot of potential. This is just one aspect of it, but there's so many other little things that you can customize that just make sense that you can do intuitively, and for a developer, it's amazing. And yeah, I just had to give in to the urge to just send it away. So that is everything I have to show so far. If Brandon or anyone else from Stress Level Zero or any other VR game development team using Unity is interested in this system, let me know on my email, lockywestfall at gmail.com and I'll see if we can figure something out. Although I wouldn't be surprised if the Stress Level Zero team already tried a sheltering system like this, I don't understand why they wouldn't have kept it in the game. Unless they have written their own physics engine, they will likely be using a system very similar to what I have developed, and it would be reasonably easy to transfer the sheltering behavior over to Boneworks. If that sounds like something you want to see, make sure to share this video and try to get it some attention. With all that said, I'll update you when I have some more news. See you later.